uh, hi this is lecture 9 of m triple to 3 so in last sessions what we have seen is the is the notion of convergent sequences monotone sequences bounded sequences and the definition of these all these three including one more uh, class of sequences that we have seen already before but uh, we, we didn't really use we didn't really understand any of that we didn't use it to understand uh, any other consequence or anything like that only the definition that we know for four class of sequences for the three i mentioned convergent monotone bounded we have seen some results not very serious but some results we have seen so now what is remaining for us to think about is uh, cauchy sequences so in this session we'll see some results about cauchy sequences and uh, we'll we'll see how far we can uh, understand about uh, cauchy sequences okay so, so let us at least write down the definition of cauchy sequence so what is the definition of cauchy sequence a, a sequence an uh, is said to be cauchy sequence if something happens so given epsilon positive have a natural number such that some some condition satisfies some some approximation we will be able to uh, see what is it the estimate a n minus a m is less than epsilon for all n comma m greater than n less than equal to n so th this is the definition of cauchy sequences a sequence a n is said to be cauchy if given epsilon positive there is a element n belongs to n such that one can uh, approximate this in this way for every n comma m greater than or equal to n so let us first write down what this really means we'll get rid of this mod and uh, write this as minus epsilon less than a n minus a m less than epsilon i'm not doing anything serious this, i'm just writing down what what does what is the definition of this and uh, the de definition of this again this is to for all n comma m greater than equal to n now there are two variables in the sense n comma m varies over over the set n n plus 1 so on so this is the set n n plus 1 so on so this n and m varies over this set this is true for any any two elements of this set this is true for every n comma m in this set in particular if i take m to be the first element of this set it is still true so what i'll do is i'll replace this m by this n the first element of this set and now now instead of two variables in the as in the previous case it was n and m now there is only one variable this is fixed this is one real, one real number there is nothing uh, but, but this will keep on varying this will keep on varying over this an an plus 1 so on i want to get rid of an here so i'll just add in the these two places and this will go on so what do we have we have an minus epsilon less than an less than an plus epsilon for all n this kind of thing should remind you something that you have seen before whenever we talk about a sequence being convergent what do we have an element l belongs to r with the following property given epsilon positive there exists a n such that for every n greater than or equal to n we have the following condition l minus epsilon less than an less than l plus epsilon okay, this is the definition of this sequence being uh, convergent to l right if you observe these two looks exactly same uh, this is a real number and uh, th th this is this is a, this is this varies in a, in a in a set a n n plus 1 a n plus 2 so on so if you observe these two uh, situation looks exactly same right so maybe we can conclude from here itself that this a n is the limit of uh, this sequence can we do that can can we do that think about it pause the video here and think about can i can i really say that this a n is the limit of the uh, the sequence a n because see if you observe these two 
looks exactly same there is no no difference right so maybe this an is the limit of uh, the sequence so every cauchy sequence is convergent yes no think about it once you are uh, once you spend some time again start the video and uh, we will proceed further one thing that doesn't fit in the setup of convergent sequences is the following this l the time using to talk about convergence of a sequence is uh, fixed or guessed before even talking about epsilon right what is the definition of convergent sequence a sequence an converges to l a sequence an is a convergent sequence if there is a l belongs to r and something happens so even to talk about convergent sequence we need a l first before talking about epsilon in this case this an absolute it, it depend, <laughs> depends on n so this element that we are uh, guessing as a we are expecting the limit of this sequence an this element is determined after we uh, fix a epsilon positive this is not the definition of uh, convergent sequence right whatever this element here this l should should be declared guessed or we, we try to guess much before talking about epsilon so this does not really say that uh, it's a convergent sequence so if I, if i choose a different epsilon this n will vary this will also vary that means what a sequence an will have three four limits or more than that so that doesn't really makes uh, much sense so this which looks like convergence of sequences doesn't really say that it is convergent so it should be uh, should be really careful so <laughs> this it was a uh, it was trying to project itself as convergent sequence but it's not really convergent sequence all we know is th th this element is uh, declared after fixing epsilon positive so this is not a convergent sequence i mean it may not be convergent sequence this doesn't say that that's all we 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 are able to conclude now now okay that that may be it may not be convergent sequence but it's it still gives some nice uh, description for the cauchy sequence what does it give this uh, says the elements an minus epsilon and an plus epsilon these two gives bound for the following set an an plus 1 so on so what does this say these two elements combines to give a uh, to to make this a bounded subset of r so so this should suggest you that uh, maybe we need to check that this is a bounded sequence right a, a n uh, has this as a subset and see you see the difference between this and this these two are actually same with a with, with a finite set missing what is the finite set the set is a1 dot 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 an minus 1 this set is missing from here to give this so this set union this set is actually an if you are able to prove see this is already bounded subset finite sets are bounded that i have already said before multiple times union of two bounded subsets should be a bounded subset if you don't know that try to prove this concludes that an is a bounded subset of r so even even though we did not really <laughs> get the convergence of the sequence an starting with cauchy sequence we were able to prove that cauchy sequences are bounded that the an is a bounded subset of r means what the sequence is bounded sequence nice so let me write down that cauchy sequence are bounded see th this should suggest you something convergent sequences are also bounded right convergent sequences being bounded this we have already seen in the last session now we have seen cauchy sequences are bounded so see these two have this common property so this suggest 
maybe we should uh, work uh, slightly harder and see how they are related is is being bonded the only common property of these two or is there any other property that is common for both right now we have started it with a cauchy sequence and try to prove that it is convergent so the obvious thing that we can do is just this and from here we are it's not very clear how to proceed further so what do we do is we'll just keep that idea aside for some time looking for uh, cauchy being convergent let us try the other direction can i say convergent is cauchy maybe one of them is uh, straight forward one of them is not straight for straight forward this was not very easy for us it i mean, I mean I do not really know what to do after this. After this step, what do I do? It is not very clear. So, let us see, maybe this is a, a straightforward convergence being Cauchy. So, let us try that. So, A n is a, is a convergent sequence. What does it come with? It comes with the element A belongs to R such that something happens. What is it? Uh, given from positive, there, there is an element n belongs to n such that a n minus a is less than epsilon for all n greater than greater than equal to n. So, so this is the uh, definition of convergence sequence. Now what? Now we are trying to see if this is a Cauchy sequence. For that, what do we need? Uh, this is this is starting point for both uh, Cauchy and convergent. Starting with epsilon positive, we want an element n belongs to n. We already have one element which may not may work or may not work. We don't know such that some condition is satisfied that is not actually same thing as this that is not this that is not what I want what we want is the following modulus of a n minus a m is an epsilon for all n comma m greater than n. You see you, if you observe there is a slight difference between this and uh, this here the element a is involved here we do not really have an external element we only have elements of the sequence an minus am now we'll approximate this uh, an minus am so so this is the trick that we'll be using we multiple times in the, in the next in the in the course so that is the following so what we do is we instead of an minus am we'll consider this an minus a plus a minus a and just adding a and subtracting now what is this this is uh, less than or equal to a n minus a plus a n minus a modulus of a plus b is less than or equal to mod a plus mod b this you already know if you do not know try to prove it at least once in your yeah once in this 5 years you should be able to prove at least once and now I know I know uh, what this is this is less than epsilon this is also less than epsilon so this is uh, less than epsilon plus epsilon it is equal to 2 epsilon. So, uh, for every n comma m greater than equal to n, this has an approximation to be less than 2 epsilon. Ideally, this is where we should really stop and conclude that it is a uh, Cauchy sequence, but uh, only for the formality issue, I will also tell you how to fix this to reach this. See, this is also okay for me. I mean, uh, this difference being less than two epsilon is as good as this difference is less than epsilon for me. But it it is a practice to get some epsilon here, not not in a multiple of uh, epsilon. So what do we do is suppose we want to fix at this level, we will start looking from the beginning and see at what point should I correct something so that I get 2 epsilon here that is the that is the whole point fine given epsilon positive this is the situation see epsilon is positive this also implies epsilon by 2 is also positive and there should not be any difference between these two these two cases epsilon is positive implies epsilon by 2 is positive. See this n, this n whatever I have uh, written here, this was for the convergence sequence uh, definition of a n, a n was convergence sequence. So, there exists some n 
something happens. Now, I am trying to use the same epsilon for uh, the Cauchy sequence also. So, what do we do is instead of looking for some element n with the property less than epsilon, one can change the beginning. This is this is now what I am saying is about Cauchy sequences. Fix epsilon is positive, consider epsilon by 2, this is also positive. Apply convergence sequence definition for this, not this. Why should I do like that? I do not really care, but uh, people want uh, here to be epsilon. For that reason, start with epsilon positive, we are thinking about Cauchy sequences. Now, apply convergence sequence definition for epsilon by 2 instead of epsilon. Now, what do we get? Uh, epsilon by 2 is positive, so there is a n belongs to n such that mod n minus a is less than epsilon by 2 or maybe we should write here epsilon by 2. So, this change will be reflected here because everything else there is no epsilon or, or anything like that. So, it will be reflected here uh, giving us epsilon that is all. See this, this is only for uh, yeah, formality. But yeah, if you, if you really want to be uh, as it is written in the textbooks, this is what you are supposed to do. Start with the front positive, we are looking for uh, to prove that it is a Cauchy sequence. It is already given it to be convergence sequence. So, apply the convergence sequences starting at epsilon by 2, not epsilon. Starting at this situation, we get uh, some element n with this property. If this is the case, it will there, there will be change here. That is previously it was epsilon, now it is epsilon by 2, those two add up to epsilon. So, this says for this epsilon, there exists n such that this uh, difference is uh, less than epsilon. This says a n is Cauchy. So, what does this say? Any convergence sequence should be Cauchy sequence. Convergence implies Cauchy sequence. Now, see this is uh, this observation is actually forcing us to think more about the converse. See, look at the situation. Cauchy sequence is bounded. Convergence sequence is bounded. Both of them has a really nice uh, common property. Now, we have also seen the other direction. Convergence implies Cauchy. So, this suggests if if you try slightly harder. Maybe we can we can uh, prove the other direction also. Cauchy might actually mean imply convergence. I mean th that's what it suggests that th there is there is so much common between in between those two. It may be the case or may not be the case. How do you know without uh, proceeding further? And and now I want to see. I don't even know where to start. Cauchy sequence is uh, I'm starting the Cauchy sequence. Then what do I do to prove that it is a convergence sequence? Now, I should go back and check, did I did I try to understand any anything about uh, the three class of sequences that suggest that if I start at somewhere, I get a convergence sequence. You, you, you see the notes, then you will realize there is a result that says at some situation, if a sequence has some property, then for sure it is convergence sequence. What is that? Monotone bounded in place convergent. Right. Monotone bounded serum says if a sequence is both monotone and bounded then it is convergent. One nice thing to <laughs> observe here is Cauchy sequences are already bounded. So, maybe if we can prove that Cauchy sequences are monotone then we can apply this theorem and conclude that it is convergence sequence. The idea is clear. The, the only theorem that I know that says when some something is a Cauchy sequence is this. I do not know any other result, only this I know. So, when I know only this, I, I am forced to use only this because I do not know anything else. So, let us try to use this. So, this is this is guaranteed for a Cauchy sequence. Every Cauchy sequence is every Cauchy sequence is bounded. Now, if every Cauchy sequence is monotone, then we are done. 
we can we'll just apply the theorem apply this theorem and conclude it is convergence now the question is is every cauchy sequence monotone is every cauchy sequence a monotone see the, this monotone is is actually some some strict condition in this one the following sense it says a sequence a n a 1 a 2 dot 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 this being monotone means the whole sequence is uh, very nice from the very starting point of that in the in the sense either a 1 less than or equal to a 2 a 3 dot 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 or a 1 a 2 a 3 oh, ok. Uh, let us take the following situation. Think of this as monotone sequence satisfying this increasing condition. Now, what do we do is the following. Assuming these two are actually different elements, let us just invert the two elements in, in the sense uh, interchange the two elements instead of this sequence. Let us consider this sequence a 2 a 1 a 3 dot dot dot. So, now what do we get? We, we have to replace this by a 2 and a 1 because of the relation between a 2 and a 1 is this we will reach at this situation, but this is not an increasing sequence there is a difference here right. So, any slight change in the monotone sequence does not retain the uh, monotoneness of the sequence. So, we took a sequence we just interchange the first two elements it, it did not uh, stay as monotone sequence, but if I take a sequence if I interchange first two elements if it is bounded this is bounded if it is convergent this is convergent if this is Cauchy this is Cauchy right at least for boundedness it is very, very straightforward because it is only the image that matters not the sequence. Let us check for let us do this explanation for convergent sequences. So, A from N to R is convergent and let us uh, let us create a new sequence B from N to R with the following description. We need to declare what B n to be something. So, I am leaving it as A n for all n greater than or equal to uh, 3 and uh, a 2 for n is equal to 1 a 1 n is equal to 2 this is the sequence that I am going to do. Given a convergence sequences given a convergence sequence a we produce the sequence b. Now, we are trying to check whether it is convergent or not. Now, see for this sequence guess an element in r to which this might converge let us take l to be the limit of this sequence. What does this say? Given epsilon positive, there exists a n belongs to n such that this mod a n minus a is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n. Suppose, just for suppose, this n is uh, greater than or equal to 3, that means it satisfies this condition. Then what do we have? A n is same thing as b n. See, let us assume see that there are two uh, possibilities for n either n should be greater than or equal to 3 or n is equal to 2 or n is equal to 1. These are the only three possibilities. Let us assume it is of this condition. Then I can actually replace this by b n, right. So, I will just remove this a n and write simply as b n. What does this say? This says b n converges to A. So, if I start with the convergence sequence, if I if I just interchange the first two elements, the convergence does not really change. See, one can think of what can you do for these two situations. Suppose n is equal to 2, then I cannot write this, I cannot replace a n by b n. Now, what do I do? If n greater than 2, something holds for n greater than equal to 2, it should also hold for n greater than equal to 3 also, right. So, let me let me write down like this. So, suppose this is a, this is the condition that uh, that we are getting n is equal to 2 and uh, this is a n. 
right? This, this is true for all n greater than root two, but three is also greater than two. So if something works for this, in particular, it should work for this also. In this situation, a n is equal to b n. So I'll just write down that. Is the idea clear now? If the element n I'm choosing is greater than three, I can immediately change it. I can immediately use it here, and uh, conclude. If n is equal to two, if something is true for this situation, n greater than two, it's also true for n greater than three. So then, after writing that one step, one extra step, I will replace this a n by b n and conclude that b n is uh, converges to a. What happens if n is equal to one? Same thing. <laughs> if it is two for n greater than one, it's two for two, three, four, five, whatever. So in parallel, it's two for uh, this also, and uh, then I'll replace. So all you need to do is you need to add some ex one extra line. If this is true, uh, this being a n for every n greater than equal to three, it's also true. Uh, if if it is true for n uh, greater than equal to one, it's also true for n. Uh, See, this is just one example. Uh, maybe I'll give more more uh, uh, such questions as assignment in the in, in the in this week. See, this is this is the nice thing about convergence sequences. If you replace, if you not only replacing, if you just inter, if you just yeah. So if you take a convergence sequence and replace a finite string here, we, we have interchanged this uh, this places a one and a two, but You need you see this uh, explanation doesn't really have anything to do with a one and a two, right? So even if you replace a one a two by something else, say c one c two, some arbitrary element c one c two, this thing does not play any role in this explanation, right? So and uh, it's not uh, this uh, num two numbers are not special. You can replace any finite string, even in the beginning or somewhere in between of the sequence. The convergence still remains. A convergence sequence. If I if I take a, if I take a convergence sequence, replace a finite string in the sequence with some with some uh, random sequence, random uh, finite string. The result will still be a convergence sequence. So uh, I mentioned for uh, two elements, you can take any uh, any finite string, and. Uh, And then conclude your uh, convince yourself that it is actually a convergence sequence. So why did I say uh, about this? This thing, this uh, changing the first two elements or anything like that, that is not working for monotone sequences that we have seen just now, right? If I take a, if I take a uh, monotone increasing sequence, then if if I if I change the first two elements, this will this will still be convergent if this is convergent, but this will not be monotone if it is monotone. Because of the justification that I said, I gave just now. So asking for a Cauchy or convergent or bounded to be monotone is not actually a, a, a smart idea, because okay, we take a Cauchy sequence that is monotone. So, suppose we have this, that case, there may be sequences which are Cauchy and monotone, both, right? Now what what do we do is We do the previous procedure, whatever we have done just now. So doing that, we'll keep this as Cauchy, but this as not monotone, right? The previous procedure, we we will make will uh, remove this pro this property of being monotone. So this says there are Cauchy sequences that are not monotone. You can replace this with uh, convergent or bounded anything. So asking. For a Cauchy sequence to be monotone is too much. That is uh, clear just now. So now I cannot use this result. This is the only result that I know. Now I cannot use it immediately, or I cannot use uh, by this justification. So what do we do? L let us let us remember what we want to do. We want to uh, use this monotone uh, monotone boundedness theorem. For Cauchy sequences, Cauchy and Cauchy sequences are all bounded. So we want to apply for the, that theorem. 
can conclude it is convergent. So, so this is the only thing that I know. So, at any at any cost, I want to use this. I mean, if I have to use something, I have to use this only because I don't know anything else. And uh, it is very clear just now, Cauchy sequences are not monotone. In the, okay, let me rephrase this. Cauchy sequences may not be monotone. We have seen the example just now. So, one cannot apply this theorem directly for the Cauchy sequence. Now, what? Uh, let us recall what we have done, we have done just now. So, a Cauchy sequence that is monotone can be turned into Cauchy sequence that is not monotone. This is what you have seen just now. There is a procedure to convert Cauchy monotone into Cauchy not monotone. What we have seen just now is this. Now, all we can do <laughs> is to hope that there is a procedure that converts Cauchy not monotone into Cauchy monotone. That is what we will hope for now. Now, we are looking for a procedure that converts Cauchy not monotone sequences into Cauchy monotone sequences. See, you can always uh, suppose it is a suppose a, n is a Cauchy monotone not monotone sequence. You can of course associate the sequence one 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 so on. This is Cauchy. This is monotone. You can associate like this. But that's not the point. Whatever we are going to construct here, that should have as much information about this sequence as it can. You see, if if I if I write here 1 1 1. This will be irrelevant when we are uh, trying to compare with this sequence. This this might have a, a different set of information. So, uh, our idea is to now produce a sequence that is a uh, monotone and it should be very close to the sequence a n in, in any sense that is the that is the whole idea. So, now the question is the following should I think about monotone increasing or monotone decreasing? Given a sequence, should I think about constructing a monotone increasing sequence or monotone decreasing sequence? That is not very clear. So, now we are, uh, it is not very clear. Uh, now, the, the problem is the following. Somebody gave me a Cauchy sequence uh, or a bounded sequence for that matter. It does not really make a difference. So, bounded and monotone. The bonnet not monotone. See, see this phrase may be slightly confusing. It 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 means there may be some stage where the monotoneness is uh, is 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 not uh, happening. So, given a uh, bounded monotone non monotone sequence, we are trying to produce a bounded monotone sequence. So, the first thing to ask is the following, what is a bounded sequence? It only means that uh, the image a n is a bounded subset. What does it give? It gives two elements, one is infimum, one is supremum. See, one can also take any lower bound, but uh, that is uh, that is not a better description. These are better descriptions for the sequence A in terms of uh, order. These two are the are better descriptions than any arbitrary lower bound or upper bound. So, given a bounded sequences, bounded sequence, these are the two, two numbers that I know. Now, if you observe that uh, this are actually maps from these are these actually maps from bounded below subsets, one and above subsets to R. Right? If you remember, if you do not remember, go back and check. Infimum is a map from bounded below subsets of R to R. Supremum is a map from bounded above subsets of R to R. Right? These, these are that. See why I am mentioning this? 
this has a property of increasing sequence and decreasing sequence how if a these are actually decreasing decreasing or increasing based on what you choose if you choose, if you choose this something is true if you choose this something is true in in the following sense i'll i'll also uh, i'll also tell what does it really mean take it, take two subsets a subset of b then uh, let us take this in uh, the bounded below situation now what happens what can you say about uh, this elements in form of a and in form of b see b is this set a is this set now how do i remember what direction is correct you don't have to remember anything just try to draw something and uh, it is possible that uh, because b has some extra elements it is possible that uh, if there is an element of b that is less than all elements of a this is actually an exercise that uh, you should have done if you have not done then i am saying again there may be an element of b that's actually less than every element of a so what does that say that in form of b uh, is uh, less than in form of a right there, there, there are uh, there may be many elements so an element of b could actually be a lower bound for a there may be elements of b elements of b the that are uh, not elements of a that are lower bound for uh, for a in particular the infimum will always be less than infimum of a so this suggest what using infimum sequence infimum using infimum map we may be able to produce a decreasing sequence similarly supremum of a is a supremum of b if if we choose our subset appropriately one of this we will be able to use so uh, as i said instead of looking for uh, what choice to make should i look for monoton increasing or monoton decreasing let us just ask let us do both monoton increasing monoton decreasing how do i do that in the following way so an subset of r is bounded so for this i have in form of an let me call this as b1 now there are two choices i can make if i if i have to use this i need to look for an element look for a a, a subset of this an consider the following set this a n minus 1 i am just ignoring the first element of the sequence and that what the image is just this subset of an this a is subset of b in this sense what does it say in form of a is a greater than or equal to in form of b so this we have already writing as b1 let me uh, this will write as b2 so in form of an minus 1 is equal to b2 what does this say this says b1 is less than or equal to b2 and that's what we have a b1 was the in form of the whole C, whole in form of the image an b2 is in form of the 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 image of the sequence except the first element one can proceed in this way further one can remove the first uh, two elements in the sense one can take the sequence an n greater than or equal to 2 take in form of this so i uh, will write down this as yeah this 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 will, this will be 3 i am removing one element uh, this notation i am writing as 2 if i am removing 2 i should write as 3 right see this only index you should not really that should not really mean anything nice so in this way we are able to produce a sequence 
b1 less than equal to b2 less than equal to b3 so on. So, any bounded sequence see boundedness is necessary here because this does not make any sense for unbounded sequence. So, given a bounded sequence that may not be monotone we are able to produce an increase in sequence is it bounded is this sequence a bounded sequence one thing is very straight very clear that b1 is a lower bound for that. So, this b1 is a less than or equal to every element of the, 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 this sequence. What can you talk about what can you uh, say about the is there a is there a maximum is there a uh, can you can you think can you conclude from the boundedness of a n where, where is it yeah a n is bounded from that can you conclude that this is bounded think about it exercise. A n is bounded should imply this is bounded. One bound is already already clear the, the, the first element of this. Can you also think of a supremum of or an upper bound of this sequence? Now, whatever you have done here using minimum, one can do the same thing for supremum. You replace this <laughs> this thing for supremum and call it as C1. Now, if I take a subset of this, I am changing this also, this is also supremum and uh, this is C2. Now, for infimum, this was the condition, for supremum, you think about it, what should be the condition? Again, go to this diagram, take a subset B, subset uh, A that is contained in B, there may be elements in B which are uh, greater than every element of A. So, that says there is a uh, there, it's, there is a possibility that an element of B is actually an upper bound of A. So, supremum of B should be greater than supremum of A. So, here the this situation is reversed B2 is, uh, is not B2 C2. So, again you can you can change this also supremum of the sequence starting at A2 that we are writing as C3. Again the same thing this also will change let me erase all this. So, what does this give? This gives a decrease in sequence C1, C2, C3 so on. Again the same question from a bounded sequence I have produced a decrease in sequence fair enough is it bounded upper bound is clear the first element is an upper bound that is that is clear can I also think of a lower bound do I know that some element here exists so, not not exactly <laughs> here do I know some element exists that is a that is a lower bound for the for the image of this sequence exercise convince yourself that this procedure is actually giving us a bounded sequence. So, given a bounded non monotone sequence, this gives us two bounded monotone sequences. 1 by considering the supremum, 1 by considering the infimum. Now, what for these two sequences I can apply the, the theorem that I want to that I am very desperate to apply. Right, this is the only theorem that I know, so I want to apply it somewhere. <laughs> so, I will apply this theorem for those two sequences. So, for infimum of uh, a k k greater than equal to n, for this sequence I can apply the bounded modern uh, theorem this gives me uh, some limit right, this is a convergence so there should be some limit. So, this I am calling as and, uh, this I am denoting by
this phrase, this single word. So, this is, this is uh, usually called as lim inf of a n, lim inf of a sequence a n. Right, this is this is a this is a number. Even though a n is not convergent, just if somebody tells me a n is a bounded sequence, I can talk about this notion, an element of R that more or less describe the sequence uh, a n. Given a sequence a n, if it is bounded, if it is not con not necessarily convergent, still you are able to produce an element in R that describe the, the sequence A to some extent that we are calling as lim inf of the sequence A n. Similarly, the sequence supremum of A will also convert somewhere. So, this limit we are calling as lim sup of A n. So, a possibly non convergent sequence will give two convergent sequences if it is bounded of course, a bounded possibly non convergent sequence will give you two sequences that are convergent for sure and those limits we are calling as lim inf and lim sup. Uh, so, no, now the question is the following, okay. again let us go back to the, 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 the previous case, we are looking for Cauchy sequence to be convergent. We were trying to use the monotone boundedness theorem for this Cauchy sequence, but we realized uh, Cauchy sequences are not monotone. There may be sequences that, that are Cauchy, but not monotone. So, we cannot apply the theorem directly. So, what we have done is this we produce two sequences. So, uh, if I if I take A n as a Cauchy sequence, it is bounded of course, that we have seen just now. So, be, because A n is bounded, I can apply the theorem for this sequence giving this number for this sequence giving this number. Now, there is a problem suppose these two are I mean to talk about convergence I should have one, one element of R right, but here there are two elements. What, what do I do what choice should I make here? If there is, if there is only one element then uh, maybe I will uh, proceed with uh, this being the guess first guess. Even if these two are same that may not be true that is different thing. But if these are two, if these if these two are equal, then uh, it it makes my life slightly uh, easier to proceed. In the sense, I don't have to think what is a better choice for the convergence. So first thing to check now is, are these two same? That's what we need to check now. So let me write down this uh, L one as a lim inf of a n and L 2 as lim sup of a n. Now, we are trying to see whether uh, these two are actually same. If they are same there is a then we, we should be slightly happier because there is a single element associated to sequence uh, a n using that we may be able to we may be able to prove that it is uh, a convergent sequence. If this is not true, then we do not know what to how to proceed further. Even if this is true, this may not be the correct choice, we may, be, we may have to make some small changes, but at least we should check whether this is the same or not. So, how do we check that? Okay. So, so now uh, let us take the following situation A subset of B, this implies, this, this says something about the relation between inform of A in form of B, supremum of A and supremum of B. Because A subset of B, we have this condition that in form of B will be less than in form of A. Uh, again, because B subset of, because A subset of B, supremum of A will be less than supremum of B. So, this says uh, in form of B is less than or equal to Supremum of A less than equal to supremum of A less than equal to supremum of B. Now we will we'll try to apply this idea for the for the image of the sequence that we, we, we considered before. What was that? 
it was a uh, an for all n subset of an equal to 2 subset of an equal to 3 see whenever i am writing like this and writing subset it means the image that what that what i mean and i can i can continue this like this uh, forever to talk about uh, limin flim sum we have taken this sequence this sequence of subsets decreasing sequence of subsets for this sequence inform is increasing uh, the, the corresponding inform if you take for this we will get increasing increasing uh, sequence so infimum of an is uh, less than or equal to infimum of an less than or equal to infimum of an so the uh, so then we have said that the lim inf is the it is an increasing sequence so there should be some some limit for which the, this sequence converges that we have called as lim lim inf now for the same thing we get the following sequence supremum of an supremum of then we have said this is a decreasing sequence the limit to which this converge is a lim sum observe the following see we, we, we it's obvious that the relation between the what is the relation between these two sequences right in sum is less than supremum in sum is less than supremum at each stage it is less than that i'm saying this concludes the min of an less than or equal to of an i mean if if you are if i'm <laughs> saying just like this uh, it looks this is uh, this is fine let us at least try to give some uh, justification for that so now, so now what is this this is a limit of this increasing sequence right suppose we can prove that uh, infimum of an n equal to k is less than lim sup of an for every k right so so this is this is what uh, this is less than this and this is true i mean this is true for every k belongs to n then because it is it is a, it is an increasing sequence this is an increasing sequence and uh, every element is uh, less than or equal to this so the limit will also be less than or equal to this so we need to prove this first this concludes this by the justification that i gave just now right this is fair enough S suppose i can prove that uh, uh, for each fixed k in n this is true then i can conclude uh because it because it's a increasing sequence then then i can conclude that lim inf will also be less than this now the question is how do i prove this okay so if i can prove that first of all i'm fixing some element k here then i'm trying to prove that this element is less than this is same thing as saying this element is less than every element so i am trying to prove that infimum of an equal to k is less than or equal to supremum of an say l for every l belongs to n right if i if i prove this if i prove this uh here k is fixed okay l is varying k is fixed k is the one that that i that i fixed in the beginning now if i prove this is true for every l then because it's a decreasing sequence and this is a this is a lower bound the limit if i if i take the limit here the, the if i take the limit here that will be still uh, greater than equal to this that's what that's what we need to uh, understand now the question is how do you prove this 
So, uh, I fix k and uh, so let us take two random uh, elements, uh, uh, an element k belongs to n, an element k belongs to n, an element l belongs to n, we will try to see whether infimum of a n k is less than or equal to supremum of a n less than or equal to l. Suppose k less than or equal to l, what can you say about the relation between a n k and a n less than or equal to l. So, so, what is this? This is a l, a l plus 1 dot dot dot. What is this? This is a k, a k plus 1 dot dot dot. Because k is less than l, there will be something a l dot dot dot. So, the image of this contains Sorry. The, the image of this is contained in this. So, we should have this uh, inclusion. If A is subset of uh, B, let us see what can we say about this. If A is subset of B, infimum of B is less than or equal to supremum of A, right. So, infimum of A is subset of B implies infimum of B is less than supremum of A. So, this is correct. Suppose K is greater than equal to L, then what happens? This is reversed, right? This inclusion is reversed. We have this subset. We have this A is a subset of B. Infimum of this will be less than supremum of this. Supremum of this will be less than uh, supremum of this. So, this 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 holds. So, in any case this is true. If this is true for every L and for every K by previous description this is true. Similarly, this is true. So, we want we, we wanted to prove uh, that this is the case then by step by step we have seen that. Uh, uh, so, 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 first step is to get rid of this limit here. So, we have written this infimum, then we got we got rid of this limit here, we got supremum, then we have seen that this is actually true for every k and l. So, this inequality is clear. So, lim inf of an less than or equal to lim sup of an. Okay. So, now this is true, we will try to prove the other direction. You see, this this says we are already very very close to whatever we are very close to equality. If you can prove that it is uh, the other direction is also true. So now you want to prove that uh, lim sup of a n less than or equal to lim of a n. This is what we want to prove. Now let us let us see see we didn't still use whatever we have done uh, till now. We have not really used that a n is a Cauchy sequence. We, we, we used a n is a Bonnet sequence, but not a Cauchy sequence. So, now we will use that. So, a n is a Cauchy sequence. So, given epsilon positive, there is an element n belongs to n such that a n minus a m is a less than epsilon for all n comma m. So, what does this say? This says a n or a m whatever it is minus epsilon is less than a n less than a m plus epsilon for all n comma m. So, consider this situation a m minus epsilon is less than a n. This is true for all n comma m. Whatever you have done previously that the same trick that we will use here also that concludes so, this, this is this is the definition of Cauchy sequence. Now, what do we do? We will we'll, we'll take uh, this part. So, a m minus epsilon is less than a n for every n comma m. So, we have just considered uh, this part. Now, see this implies see, this is true for all n. In particular, this is true for all n 
Let will do m. Right? This is true for all n, n comma m, uh, for all n comma m greater than or equal to capital N. In particular, this is true for all uh, elements of this one. So, am minus epsilon less than an for all n. I am fixing one m here. This m might vary over n, but I am fixing one m. Then this is true for all uh, n greater than equal to m. So, this says if I take the infimum of a n n greater than to m, see, see we have we have this just this, this is true for all m uh, of course greater than equal to n. Uh, now, we will take this uh, this condition a n is less than a m uh, plus epsilon for all n comma m greater than n. So, here what we have done is we have fixed some m, here also we will do the same thing, we will fix, uh, we will fix some m and ask, see this is true for all n comma m, in particular this is true for all n, so here I can just apply this supremum, see uh, each element is less than this, so supremum there is a slight possibility of getting equality but that is that is fine n so now what, now we have these two conditions a m minus epsilon is less than this and supremum of that is less than that so we'll just and see this is this is a single set so infimum will always be less than supremum so what does this say this says a m minus epsilon is uh, less than or equal to so now what this is less than this and this is uh, less than this. So, supremum of a n greater than equal to m minus epsilon is less than equal to a m. Now, this a m is uh, less than this plus epsilon right. So, this is less than equal to infimum of a n plus epsilon. So, one can actually ignore this, this part just pull it to the left side. So, what does this say? This says supremum of a n n greater than to m is less than or equal to infimum of a n m plus 2 epsilon. Again the same thing that we have done, the same trick, one can apply limit on both sides. Supremum, this is a decreasing sequence. So the, so, so the limit will still be less than uh, this. So, if I if I apply limit here, I get lim sup of a n is uh, less than or equal to infimum of a n equal to m. Again, this infimum is an increasing sequence. So, if, if, if uh, this is less than this, uh, for every for every m greater than something, so if I take the supremum of this, would it will be still be uh, greater than this. So, that says lim sup there is a plus 2 epsilon here of course, a n is less than or equal to lim inf a n. Now, and uh, there is 2 epsilon also. So, this is true for all epsilon positive which which means we can we can ignore that. So, this inequality along with this inequality says lim inf of a n is actually equal to lim sup of a n. So, this says for a Cauchy sequence this is the case, this is the case for Cauchy sequence. So, one can uh, uh, so, so now there is a small hope that uh, the sequence a n converges to this. Observe the following, for each n belongs to n, what is b n? It is infimum of a k for k greater than to n. What is c n? Supremum of a k k greater than to n. So, this says this a n lies between c n and b n. So, this sequence converges as we have said before, this sequence converges as we have said before and this sequence 
is lies in between these two and uh, be, uh, this conclusion says these two limits are same. It is an exercise, it is an exercise for you to check that if I have a sequence, if I have a sequence a and b and c n with this condition such that the limit of the sequence, the limit of this sequence is equal to limit of this sequence, then this is a convergent sequence and the limit of this is equal to limit of these two. If using that we conclude that the sequence a n is a convergent sequence. So, this says a Cauchy sequence is a convergent sequence. That is all about uh, this session. In the, in the next session, we will see uh, some other uh, results about uh, these kind of sequences.